So once you have Enscape installed, you'll notice you get two different toolbars. I'm showing you this for SketchUp. It's also for Revit, it also works for Rhino, and also works for um, ArchiCAD. And it's really similar in all of them, like the actual settings. The biggest difference I saw between all of them is like how you deal with materials, because it will be kind of native to that software. So if you're in Revit, you have different material properties than you do in SketchUp or Rhino. But the actual Enscape portion, like as long as you're following that part, you'll be like right up to speed with what we're doing. That is, is really similar. Um, so there's two main toolbars here, which is the way they're grouped. So one is just called Enscape. The other one is called Enscape Capturing. And so this is the, the capturing one. You can save that for later. And you'll, it's easy to remember which one because half the options will be grayed out. So that means that's obviously the wrong one because you can't use it yet. So until you actually have Enscape running, it doesn't let you capture anything. So the first thing you always want to do is come over here actually to the Enscape toolbar. And you can dock these and whatever. I just have them out here for now because you'll see we, we go back to them a lot. So um, it might actually make sense to move them to the top. That way we can see. Oh no, where did I put it? Oh, it's here. So we've got these two guys. So the first thing you're going to do is start on escape. And then it will open up. And it will tell you, like, this is all the stuff it's doing. And so right now I just have, like, SketchUp materials applied in there. So I didn't really use anything special out of Enscape. And the thing to remember is Enscape will remember whatever settings you set last. It's not necessarily saved to the file. And it's not saved, like, so if you send the same file to somebody else and they open it up in their Enscape, it would look different because it would be based off whatever settings their Enscape had used last. So that's something to remember. So you can see here I have these two trees I dropped in Enscape. And so I'll show you how to do that once we get in there. Um, but that's just a normal SketchUp grass. And since Enscape knows it's grass, it's kind of modeling it as if it was grass. So you can actually see it has some stuff. So let me make this a little bit different proportion. One thing that this will do is slow your computer down a lot if you're trying to do a lot of stuff at once. So I always recommend if you, if you don't have the fastest computer, close everything else out and only run Enscape and whatever software you're running it in. And if it's still running slow, the trick that will always make it speed up is you can shrink this little render preview window. So if you grab this and bring it down, it will keep updating live. So if I if I look around in here, um, it's always going to keep rendering. So the smaller that window is, the quicker it will render. I mean, obviously, if you have like a super nice computer, you can have it full screen at maximum setting. Um, but if not, that's the first thing I recommend is shrink it down. And then um, you'll notice that you can have this open and SketchUp open at the same time. And if I orbit and sketch up, it doesn't necessarily update right here. Because right now I haven't told it to match the view. Um, we can, if you go into SketchUp, so that's kind of where it gets weird where the toolbars live within SketchUp to control Enscape. And Enscape kind of needs SketchUp open, but you'll see it within this little window. And so you can go to SketchUp, and if you click this, um, the, the live updates means if you're changing stuff in the model, it will show up in Enscape. So if I were to draw, like over here, a little rectangle, come on, and push this up, and you look over here, see it just appeared, and it rendered it already. You can't actually pick it in Enscape. You can like orbit around it, but that's what Live Updates is. So let's say you have something that's like really detailed and your model is super slow, and you want to test like two different facade options, something like that, you have like a thousand <coughs> elements that are going to appear, and then you're not sure if it's the right one, and it's going really slow, you can tell it don't live update, and then you can work in SketchUp, and then when you're done, you can then turn that back on, and then it will refresh and show you kind of what's going on. So the next option is called synchronized views. So you can have like your SketchUp view set up, and there's the SketchUp camera, obviously, which is what you're looking at. If you synchronize, notice how my Enscape jumped. Now, 
you can either still maneuver within Enscape and it will not look like your SketchUp. So see if I move here, it's just looking like something different. Whereas if you tell it to sync, see how these are, it's blue now because it's synced. So if I shrink this over so that it's on one side of my screen, see it's going to try and match the proportions of this always. So let me hide the camera. <coughs> I think no matter where I put this, it's always going to be in the way. So maybe we can collapse the tray all the way. So if you have it set up so where you're linking them and you orbit and sketch up, see your Enscape will also orbit. So I know some people like can't stand the way you navigate within Enscape natively. So if you're one of those people that can't figure it out because it's different, then do this trick where you lock the views and then just always control it in either SketchUp or Revit, whatever software you're using, and orbit in that software like you would normally, or if you have, like, I have the eyeball shortcut to here so I can look around, and then I can use all the settings in SketchUp the way I normally would, and Enscape just kind of mirrors it and just follows along. Um, the next thing that's really neat is Enscape has this little cheater kind of window at the bottom, and that, if you don't see it, you can hit H, like the letter H, that key, will hide it or bring it back and it's like for presentations if you want to show this live you can hit H and hide it but if you're just modeling you forget this is the main way you move so left click on the mouse and you you click and hold it and look any direction that moves the camera so that's exactly the same as that little eyeball in SketchUp um, if you right click it orbits so that's where it gets a little different because some you, you're used to like the little mouse wheel orbiting in SketchUp or sometimes but Rhino works this way so you gotta remember that and then if you hold shift and you right click and then you move side to side that changes the time of day so see like the Sun is moving and then you get like a little thing it's pretty hard to see because it's small on my screen right now but this is showing you um, let me make this bigger and you'll see here it's gonna render a little bit slower now because it's full screened um, but that's making it different times a day. So as I drag my mouse left and right. This is important because if you when you were we're gonna go to the animations and if you have the animation works with keyframes. So if you had a different time a day between like say keyframe two and three, as it moves from two into three, it will start to shift the time of day. So some people go like nuts with that effect and then they put a different time of day on every single keyframe and go crazy with it and then like the only thing you notice as your camera's moving through is the sun like flying around and their shadows going all crazy and it's super weird because sometimes the sun goes backwards and like it's just like it's going really slow at the beginning of your animation and then out of nowhere it starts going like and then like it, it just gets disorienting. So there's a cool trick where you just change the time of day at the beginning and you change it at the end and you just let it slowly fade. Um, but besides that, um, it's pretty straightforward as far as time of day. Um, and if you go far enough, it will become nighttime. So for like night renderings and stuff, you can do that. Like I, I wouldn't recommend going much past something like this unless you really want like it to be solid black. And then if you look around, you can see like stars and the moon, wherever the moon is, I guess that might be it. There it is. So right now, this is just whatever settings I had set up. If yours doesn't look like this and you're not happy with it, then we can adjust those in the options. So let me make it daytime again. I'm just dragging the mouse to the side, holding the right button and holding shift. So exactly what you see right here, that's what you do. And that's right here on this guy. Um, to move the camera around, you could use like orbit and then try and look and then keep orbiting. And that gets like, it'll get you most places. Um, and then you can also use right here, it says WASD. So if you use those and treat them like your video game or like you would have like your, your normal arrow keys. So W is forward, S is back. And then A pans left, and then D goes to the right. And then if you look to the sides of W, you have Q and E, so that moves you up and down, depending which one you do. 
So these can get super clunky, especially if you're trying to sh show someone. But I found a really cool trick is you literally just hold down the mouse, the left button, so that it's the look tool. And then you can just hit W and see like you just move the mouse where you would want to look. And it's kind of like you're flying around. So I know the thing's going to go nuts because it says WWW. But you can do this, see? And then you can like kind of fly around. And then when you get to somewhere you like, like you stop and then like turn. So, and it also works with like any of the other keys. So you can go, oh, there's a trick where if you hit um, shift, it will speed up. So let's say this is too slow. If I hold shift now, see it goes faster. And I'm like moving even quicker. It's like a dog that's been let loose in the field. <laughs> and then if you really want to go fast, you hit control, and then you like warp everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's the shift and control, and you're usually going to end up like in outer space when you do that. So <laughs> be ready. But it, let's say you have a really big model, and there's like a lot of context. Like you have all New York modeled, and you're trying to get from one side to the other, and it's just like a snail's pace. You can do this, like start going and then you hold shift and it speeds up and then you hold control and it's way faster so these are just little tricks to like get around um, and then there's this other cool thing which is I guess it's cool but I rarely actually need it to do it when it happens but let's say you're like way up in the air like doing something like that and you want to just be on the ground here usually what happens to me is I'm trying to control SketchUp and I use shortcuts a lot. So in SketchUp, the shortcut to get back to this tool is spacebar, right? So if you hit spacebar when you're in Enscape, it's like you jumped out of a hot air balloon and you're just free falling to the ground, and then it'll like bounce off the ground and go to like eye level. So if I just hit spacebar now, it's gonna just fall, and you can't stop it, it just goes, and then you just like bounce off the ground, and then it's like you're at eye level. And there's a setting to control what what height this ends up at but no matter where you are let's say you're here if you hit spacebar you're gonna bounce off the ground so that always kinda quickly drops you if you're also really far away you can s you put your mouse on something and double click and you're gonna like spider-man like right at it and just stick right to that so if I go to this window and I double click you just fly right at it so that's like a cool trick if you're like in a big model and you need to like get somewhere really quick um, so this is all like navigating within Enscape, just little tricks and tips, um, which will become handy. And at first, it feels super weird, but once you've used it a little bit, like you'll see, it's not that bad, and it's usually pretty smooth. Um, you'll usually notice when someone doesn't know what they're doing, it's like ultra like robotic the way it moves, because you're like, er, 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 and then it's like, er, and then like, this will always happen where you're trying to go like up and then you end up going underground. So a, a really cool thing is you can use your SketchUp scenes too. So if I have that blue thing set up, the synchronized views, and then you click your scene. So in Revit this also works with your like your uh, views. You click and then it will go and then it goes. And see so here I have like different things on these scenes. So see the scenes right here I have it so that different things are shown. In Enscape, it will update right now because I have the live updates on. So the trees went away, they disappeared in Enscape, and then here, they reappeared. Here, we've got that. So um, that's the basics there. Let's go back to SketchUp. Um, this next one is to manage views, so you can like basically decide if you want to like adjust that. Create a view. So this is basically like you can set a scene use in Enscape and click this and it will generate a SketchUp view to remember that by. <laughs> and you can use those so it's kind of like you are creating a SketchUp object from within Enscape but it's really just going to match them so that you can then go back and model that exactly the way it needs to be. Um, and then um, this is for VR so just like we could in, in Podium and VRIC and do it most software now VR is no longer like a new thing. It's like pretty standard that 90% of the rendering software will have some sort of VR capacity. So when you do this, 
it changes the the output so that it would optimize it for a VR headset. So you can play around if you have one of those. Um, the next thing I want to do, these are all like things that we can add, either objects or um, like materials. And then the asset library is where we're going to get a bunch of stuff. But before we get there, I want to skip over to this one, which is settings. So 